Hello and welcome to our short demonstration of the Cybersecurity Transformation Chef, or in short, the CSTC. My name is Florian Haag, I'm the current maintainer of the project, and I will be guiding you through, to, through today's video. So, to get it started, let's have a quick look at the agenda of today's video. First, we'll start talking a bit about the origin of the CSTC. Next, we'll move on to how to get a CSTC and get it up and running into, inside an instance of the verb suit. And next, we'll jump right into the burp suit and have a look at the actual UI of the CSTC in its current form. In the main part of this video, I will be guiding you through two example use cases on how to use the CSTC in practice. And we'll close this video with some thoughts about how to contribute the CSTC and make it even better in the future. Okay, so first, let's take a quick tour on how we got started with the CSTC in the first place. Okay, so in the years of penetration testing engagement, me and my colleagues at USDRG performed, we came across a lot of custom encoding, encryption, and client or even server-side data transformations that made manual pen testing really hard and tedious for us. For example, some applications make it really hard by applying such custom encodings or encryption to um, perform an automated scanning approach via the burp suit or stuff like that. One um, one tool to like tackle those challenges in a more singular and manual approach is the awesome GCHQ CyberChef out there. I think many of you will know this tool. And the CyberChef is a real powerful tool, for example, for solving a singular isolated challenge um, regarding those encodings, encryption whatsoever. Our intention of developing the CSTC is to, to take this approach of the CyberChef to the next level and enable the automatic application of such recipes directly inside the verb suit to help it nicely integrate into our penetration testing approach. Yeah, this way the CSTC helps to overcome many technical difficulties without the need for writing custom scripts or even programming custom extensions to the verb suit just for one. Uh, penetration testing assessment. Initially, we presented the CSTC at the DEF CON 27 in Las Vegas, and we also updated the community on the latest developments in the realm of the CSTC on DEF CON 31 in our AppSec Village talk. Okay, now let's move on on how to get a CSTC. And this is quite easy. As you can see here, I just prepared a verb suit instance and already opened the B App Store, and the CSTC is readily available for you in this B App Store already. As you can see here, our latest release, which is the version 1.3.0, can just be installed with the click of a button down here, and after that, it's ready, it's ready to be used in your engagements. Another opportunity or another chance to get a CSTC is via our GitHub repository. This is a more this is a more recent version of the CSTC, and also the development builds are available here. But to get the same build as you had in the B App Store, you can just download it here from the releases section where we prepared a pre built jar for you. Okay, now let's move on to part three and let's get an overview of the UI of the CSTC. After you loaded the CSTC, as you can see up here, the plugin adds a custom tab to your Verb Suite instance that's running. If you open it up, you will get directly thrown into the main view of the CSTC, which is split into three main functional blocks. Starting over at the left, we have a panel that holds all the available operations the CSTC has to offer in order to be used inside the recipe panel in the middle. As you can see here, all the operations are grouped into, into several categories that make it more easy to find an appropriate operation, but above or here in the top, we also have like a search bar that you can use. In the middle, you can see the recipe panel and the recipe panel is split into several lanes. All the operations that you are adding to the recipe panel are processed from the top to the bottom and then with an increasing number of the, of the corresponding lane. In the far right, we also added two panels that can be used or that are very useful for debugging or developing recipes the first time. Um, basically, it works this way. You enter like your custom data, for example, an HTTP request in the input panel. And then in the output panel, you can see what your recipe or how your recipe is transforming the inputs and what's the result of all the operations applied. 
this is a good way to quickly develop custom recipes. Another main feature on how to use the CSTC is like the, is the, the request filter panel. This panel enables you to activate the CSTC for certain parts of the burp suit while using it. For example, if you check the, the proxy checkbox, the CSTC is enabled for all the requests and responses that pass through the proxy of burp suit transparently in the background. But you can also activate it for other parts of the burp suit, for example, the repeater or the scanner. Down here, you can see you can also enable it for the extender, meaning the CSTC is also able to like neatly integrate with all the plugins you are using and loving for your day-to-day -day work. Okay, but that's just up here. You can see it's just the outgoing requests panel because you can define different recipes. The outgoing request panels defines a recipe for the HTTP requests that are coming from the application through the burp suit with the running CSTC and then to the target application. And for the other way round, we have like the incoming responses panel, meaning in this panel, you can define a different recipe that is applied to all the responses coming back from the server. Then a third panel is the formatting panel, and it is like um, it is like um, a possibility to define a recipe and see how it applies without actually changing any requests or responses. So it's like, for example, you can compare it to like a built-in version of the Cyberchef, and you can try out a recipe here, and then you can move it over to the outgoing or the incoming panel if you are finished building it. Okay. So far, we have seen a quick overview of the UI, and now we'll get started with the main part of the video and have a look at two example use cases. For this case, let's move over to the repeater where I prepared some requests we are gonna be working with. A first request is shown here. It's for example, a get transaction request. It seems to be like a simple HTTP request to a web API. And if you like resend this request, you can see we get a 200 okay response from the server and the body contains some kind of encoded data. If we like highlight this data in the responses panel, Burpsuit automatically detects that the data might be base64 encoded. And as we can see here in the preview panel, um, Burp guessed correctly. And there we can see like a custom message format. For manual testing or verification, this um, kind of encoding is quite tedious because we always had to manually decode this into a readable format to be working with. This is the first use case where the CSTC can become quite handy and we can automate the task of decoding all the incoming responses. To get started, we send this request to the, to the incoming responses panel of the CSTC and can get started with building our recipe. For this case, we right click, open the context menu, choose extensions, CSTC, and then send to CSTC and choose the options that sends it to the incoming panel. After we have done that, we can move over to the incoming panel. And as we can see here, the input field now got populated with our HTTP response we saw in the repeater just a few seconds ago. As currently we have no operations defined in the recipe panel, input and output are the same. So to get started, we need to get rid of all the HTTP headers and just to extract the body. In order to do this, the CSTC defines extractor operations and here also the HTTP body so after applying this, you can see in the output panel, all the HTTP headers got removed and we are just left with the actual HTTP body we are interested in. Next, we want to base64 decode um, this data. So up here in the search bar, we can just search for base64 and we can choose the from base64 operation. And after that, we can already see, good, we like uh, see our decoded content we are interested in. But we need to take some further steps because now in this place we remove the headers and the HTTP all in all might be broken. So if this API would be consumed by, for example, a web application in the browser, the browser would not be able to understand this HTTP response any longer because we removed some vital headers that are needed for the HTTP protocol to work. For this case, we can take some intermediate step and store this uh, result of our first lane into a custom variable. So we just choose this operation. We can define a custom name. In this case, we name it just body. So now to have a look if our operation worked, we can just go to the button up here. And as we can see here, a variable named body was defined 
and is already populated with the values we are interested in. Okay, to add it back in the original HTTP response, we can just use the inverse operation of the extractor for the HTTP body we used before and go to the setter category, choose HTTP body. And now we have to define the value we want to be using. Variables in the CSTC are referenced by the name uh, prepended with a dollar sign. After we did that, we can see, okay, our output is looking great already. We have like the HTTP headers back and also the body is now base64 decoded. In currently the content type is defined as text HTML, but what we can do also, or what we can also do is like we add a custom header to it. And therefore we can say like, okay, we want to take the content type and set it to application JSON. So as we can see here, the header got replaced and now even Burpsuit knows how to pretty render the data we got back from the API. Okay, to see it live and working, we go to the filter panel and we activate it for the repeater. If we now move back to the repeater and we just resend our HTTP request, we can see great, our recipe is working and now we have a clear text view of the data we got back from the web server. Okay, we can see here, the API seems to deal with some simple financial transactions. Those are referenced by a transaction and card number. We also have like a date on which time the data was entered and we have like a simple amount. Okay, moving on to the next endpoint. As we can see here, this is not only a GET request, but a POT POST request. Um, corresponding with the name, it seems to implement some kind of search functionality. And as a transaction number and a card number is given, these are the values we can search for in the whole list of transactions we saw before. Okay, so as we can see uh, on first resending, we just got a body base64 encoded. If we now resend it, our recipe automatically got applied. And now we can see, okay, it's also working here and we just found one uh, entity or one transaction in total. Good, so the interested or the keen pen tester would now try, for example, some injection vulnerabilities. So if we, for example, are able to tamper with the transaction number to, for example, trigger an injection vulnerability like SQL injection. So if we now go here and for example, we add, uh, we add one jar to it and resend it. Okay, we get like a message that our checksum is wrong. The checksum must then be this integrity value down here. And okay, this also is another problem for us because if we are manually tampering with the payloads or with each of those two values, the response will not be valid and not processed further in the backend. If you now want to perform some manual testing or also some scanning with the built-in burp scanner, this could be a huge issue because you have to manually recalculate the integrity sum for each payload you are sending to the server. Okay. Now, in a penetration testing engagement, it would be useful to just ask the, the customer on how this mechanism is implemented. And in this case, we already know, or we know that the, the integrity sum is calculated by just appending the transaction number and the card number and calculating the SHA-1 hash of each of those values. As we know that, we now are able to build a custom recipe inside the CSTC. To do that, as before, we send a request over to the outgoing panel because now we want to build a recipe for an HTTP request. Moving over to the outgoing panel, as we saw before, now the input value got populated. Now I want to show you another great feature of the CSTC, which is the possibility to, to load and save existing recipes. For this case, I already prepared one and we can select it from the file system of the local of the local machine. Um, all the recipes are just stored as plain JSON files. Okay, after you load it up, we can see, okay, we got a new recipe, all the lanes got populated and I will quickly walk you through on how it works. For this, in order to get a step-by-step -step view on how the recipe is working, we can also, similar to the Cyberchef, disable some of the operations. 
So now we are disabling them all and we'll reactivate them one by one, explaining what each of the operation does. So first we are starting again with the HTTP body extractor. As you can see here, as before, all headers got removed and we are just left with the HTTP body of the request. Now we need to extract the transaction number and card number values. For this case, we have like a more general regular expression module. And as you can see here, we are going for the transaction number and everything after the equal sign is captured in a capture group. And then after we captured this way, the transaction number and a bit more right, also the card number, we are just outputting the capture groups. As you can see here, both groups are printed in the output panel. But currently those are delimited by a new line and this new line um, must be removed before performing the SHA-1 operation Otherwise the hash would be invalid. For this case, we can activate the replace function. We are just taking backslash n, which is the regex value for a new line, and we replace it with nothing. So down here, we can see both values are concatenated now. We can activate the SHA-1 functionality. And as we can see here already, now we are getting the SHA-1 hash, and this hash is the same as in the original HTTP request we saw. So we know our operation we, we performed is correct and we can now calculate the hashes on the fly while testing the API. What is left to do is to just store the value in the variable store and then we also add it back as a HTTP post param to the body. Great. Now the only thing left to do is just to activate the recipe for the repeater and then we can move back here. So just to verify that everything is working, CSTC is running and yeah, we can see the endpoint is still working, but this is the easy one because we are using the same data as before. So just to perform some simple tests, let's try to search for another transaction. For this case, we can move back to the first request and select the transaction number and paste it into here. And then we also take the card number over. Okay, so now both values got entered. You can see here we didn't or we have not changed the integrity sum yet, but the CSTC also adds a custom tab to the message editor here to give you like a preview of what's happening after all the recipes have run. And as you can see here, now the integrity sum is changed and we can verify it by just sending the request and now we get the details of the new transaction. So all in all, our recipe is working and we can now start testing for our injection vulnerabilities, which we wanted to do in the first place. So let's just enter a single quote and send a request. And we can see, okay, we provoked an internal server error. That seems to be interesting. So just add a simple payload, a simple OR payload that should return us all the transaction if it is passed insecurely in the backend. And after sending the request, we can see need. We found the SQL injection vulnerability and we're now able to exploit this vulnerability by using the CSTC. Great. Okay, so these were some of the use cases or to give you a quick overview on how to use the CSTC in a penetration testing engagement. So now it's time for some closing thoughts on the CSTC overall. As you saw before, we have our GitHub repository and here we also have the whole source code lying for the plugin. And now if for example, you require some custom operations, we made it really easy for you because in order to just implement a custom operation inside the CSTC, it's just necessary to implement one interface and only one method that takes a byte array as an input. Currently, we have more than 100 operations supported by the CSTC. And if you want to contribute to the plugin, you can, you can do that either by opening an issue and describing what operation is needed so we can add it to our roadmap for, for future releases. Or if you are an experienced developer, you can just develop the operation itself. As I said before, it's really easy, nothing to fear about trying getting your hands dirty, developing your own operations. And after you've done that, we would be really pleased if you just opened a pull request to our repository, then we'll review your contribution 
and add it to the next release. Okay, so the last thing that's left is to thank you for watching. I hope you will enjoy using the CSTC in future engagements. And yeah, I will hope we'll hear from you. Okay, so have a nice day and bye.